Go for all it. All right, here we are. Welcome to all of our webinar participants. If you're a high school senior looking to apply to UC Berkeley MET for freshman admissions, you have come to the right place. If for some reason you're a currently enrolled UC Berkeley student interested in the MET continuing student admissions process, we will have a separate webinar spring semester. So please check back on our website for details. My name is Chris Dito, the Executive Director of the Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program. On behalf of the program, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to share all things MET. As you can see on this slide, the UC Berkeley Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program at UC Berkeley is a dual degree program. Each student earns a full degree from the College of Engineering and a full degree from the Haas School of Business. Currently, we have seven different engineering tracks to choose from. As you can see, we've got Engineering Undeclared plus Business, Bioengineering plus Business, Civil Engineering plus Business, Electrical Engineering plus Business, also known as EECS, Industrial Engineering Operations Research plus Business, also known as IOR, Material Science Engineering plus Business, and Mechanical Engineering plus Business. The MET candidate profile includes a combination of the following, academic excellence, interest in entrepreneurship, leadership, technical skills, and a breadth of extracurricular activities. On to our next slide. This is the agenda of items we'll be covering in this webinar. Before we begin, I wanted to get a sense of who's on the call. If you guys could just drop in the chat where you're joining us from, your name and your hometown, that would be amazing. We'd love to see it. And now on to introductions of our team our MET program ambassadors, and everyone else on the call. We are gonna go over the program, our MET major tracks, and a snapshot of our program offerings. We'll finish off the webinar with information about the application process and take questions from the audience. I know many of you will have questions about MET, but we'll ask that you wait until the Q&A portion to begin submitting your questions. We'll likely cover many of your questions throughout the presentations. Now, if we can go on to our next slide. As you can see on the slide on our, on our left is our faculty director, Professor Shoykat Chowdhury. He's been the faculty director of the MET program and a professor in the Haas School of Business as well as the College of Engineering. He joined our team after 16 years at the faculty of University of Pennsylvania, where amongst other things, he led the Mac Institute and MET. He's made an immediate impact here at MET, and he's just a superstar. He would have been with us today, but he's offsite. He teaches two classes, the MET Special Topics class. So trust that you will meet him at some point in time over, over the application process. I'm Chris, as um, I've said, my name is Chris Dito. I'm the executive director. I've been with the program since 2018. My area of expertise includes career and professional development enhancement while creating pathways for student partnerships. This includes, fostering employer partnerships, outreach, streamlining our recruitment activities, strengthening relationships across campus, serving on external boards on behalf of the program, and always helping students elevate their professional trajectory. I love brainstorming ideas with our team that benefit our students, like the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program, which we will discuss in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn over the mic to Dawn Kramer. Hi, everyone. It's so great to see everybody here today. We've got a wide range of geographic locations, which is always super cool. Um, I am looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I was lucky enough to help launch the MET program back in 2016, and I am kind of the go-to for all academic-related inquiries for the program. So I work really closely with our students uh, on helping to figure out how to get those two degrees in just four years. Um, and by doing you know, academic advising, degree checks, um, try to keep them all informed of departmental information and deadlines, um, just here to, to support them along the way. Um, I am hopefully adept at demystifying the course registration process. I, I certainly try. Most of our freshmen and sophomores registered for spring classes just yesterday. Um, so it was a busy, busy day for all of our students. But I'm here to help make sure that our students graduate on time. Brianna? Hi everyone, I joined the team in September of 2022 and I handled that admissions and marketing portion of the program, which translates into all marketing content created for the program, answering any admissions questions, handling outreach like the Berkeley Showcase event we had a couple weeks back. I uh, just want to give a special shout out to all the people that I met at the Berkeley Showcase. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I also handle our social media presence, which includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera. So make sure you follow our, all of our accounts to stay up to date with Berkeley MET. 
Um, now I will be introducing Katie, who is not on the call with us today, but she is our program coordinator. On to our next slide. We are going to have you meet the pride and joy of our program, our MET student. Each student will introduce themselves and share their names, their hometown, and how they've chosen to engage while at Cal. So Trishala, you're up first. Awesome, thank you. Um, first, hi everybody, I'm Trishala and I'm a sophomore in the MET program. I study EECS and business and I'm from Dublin, California, which is in the East Bay. While I've been at Berkeley, I've gotten involved with a couple of different organizations, um, such as MET Student Board, where I get to serve as the co-VP for marketing and engagement. Um, I've also explored consulting at some student-led consulting groups. I'm super excited about product management, and I explored that last summer at App Dynamics through an internship, but I'm always working on a passion project in my free time, and I've been exploring the entrepreneurial ecosystem at Berkeley a lot more through some startup and VC opportunities. I am super excited for all of you to learn about what this amazing program has to offer. And next, I will pass it off to Ryan. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan. I am from Palo Alto, California, which is in the south of the Bay Area. Here at Cal, I spend a lot of time outdoors. I love rock climbing. I love swimming. I love hiking. Great hiking trails all in the Fire Hills. But in terms of more academics, I'm extremely involved in the research scene here on campus. I do a lot of work with biotech and machine learning. And I work in a computational imaging lab, so I do a lot of work in biological imaging. Um, I'm also very involved in the startup scene, and I'm working on something myself. And there are plenty of resources here if you're interested in pursuing that. And I'd love to talk about that if you have more questions. And on to Pedro. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Pedro. I am a senior here. I study EECS and business. I'm originally from Pleasanton, California. And here at Berkeley, I spent a lot of time doing uh, clubs, uh, machine learning at Berkeley, which is the name of a club. I know it's a little confusing. Um, but other than that, I've done uh, some research at the Berkeley AI Research Lab and at Google Brain. Uh, but mostly, I really like entrepreneurship. So I've worked in companies doing sports technology and most recently, machine learning security. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So what exactly is Berkeley MET? This is a fully integrated undergraduate program which allows you to earn a BS in engineering and a BS in business in four years. This translate in, in, translates into two full degrees. You'll complete 150 versus 120 units to earn your undergraduate degrees. We have a select cohort of approximately 50 students a year. You'll be surrounded with interesting accomplished peers who will match your motivation and drive. Last year, we, we received 5,000-ish applications for 50 spots. Rigorous, it's a very rigorous academic program with a dedicated student services team. This is an intense program with two of the toughest majors on campus. Because of that, we have an MET student services team to support you. We have an active and invested board of advisors. The MET advisory board are super boosters. They're involved on every level, from engaging with admitted students to speaking about recruiting paths to sourcing employer pipeline, pipelines for internship and career positions. We had the first of its kind partnership with Kleiner Perkins and have amazing inroads with so many companies. This board is committed to each and every student. Our first class started in fall of 2027. So this is still considered a newer program. We had our first graduating class in 2021. Because this program is like a startup within an educational institution, MET has gotten a lot of attention from recruiters in the press. Employers are eager to engage with our students who have deep engineering skills and business acumen. On to the next slide. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned, students in MET complete two degrees in four years versus getting an, a master's in business administration or an MBA, which takes nine years to complete. You will engage, engage with amazing students like yourself in this selective program. You're some of the brightest students. It's top academics from all over the world. No other dual degree program with two top three ranked undergraduate engineering and business schools based in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley with the culture of impact. The MET mission is to apply technology to solve the world's most pressing challenges in a scalable and sustainable way. Our community, again, is about 50 admitted students a year. We have an MET student board, which helps enhance the culture and student experience. One EP MET student board member said, MET gives a small communal feel to an otherwise very large school. It's a lifelong community from student to graduate to established alumni. Our MET community courses include a freshman year and junior year MET special topics and integrated courses with a capstone experience. We have a dedicated space for students, a staff floor and a student floor in Blum Hall right on the Berkeley campus, an academic advisor and a career advisor for all MET students and our program benefits include 
priority registration for all four years at UC Berkeley, beginning freshman year, spring semester, MET students will be assigned the first available enrollment date and time and have the first opportunity to register for courses. Guaranteed housing your freshman year to help ease the worry of finding housing, and MET students have a dedicated academic advisor to help them navigate the curriculum and policies of both degrees, plus a career advisor. Other resources include, again, a very engaged board of advisors, an established network of employers and startups who are sourcing internships and eventually job opportunities exclusively for MET students. What we have seen is companies really want to hire students who have deep engineering and business skills. We utilize the resources from both schools, from clubs and research centers to career services advising to faculty. You have the benefit of two world-class colleges right at your fingertips. And finally, we have a high school summer program in the works. On to our next slide. <clears throat> we wanna just go over a bit about our professional development philosophy. The premise of this slide is focusing on your professional development and how that evolves over four years in the program. The framework we adhere to is based on the fundamental notion, increased self-awareness plus increased occupational awareness equals better career-based decision. In essence, the more you know about yourself and the world of work, the better you are able to decide on a career that is a natural extension of your personality. We developed engaged leaders who change the world for the better. We help you focus on your career development journey in the following ways. You will have an academic advisor, Don Kramer. Hello, Don. We'll help you strategize your academic plan once you have committed to the university. That process begins in August before you start. Our support system includes the MET team, the MET student board, current students, the MET advisory board members who host um, office hours and resources from, again, the College of Engineering, the Haas School of Business, and any auxiliary services that the campus provides, counseling resources at the Student Health Center, Recreation Center for Exercise, peer advising on campus, et cetera. Our network includes all of the students in the program, graduates of the program, alumni of UC Berkeley, the MET Advisory Board, employer partners, and beyond. We also help develop confidence by gently nudging engagement academically, professionally and personally. We encourage a great deal of employer engagement, which happens early in one's academic career with MET. We also have many students involved in club engagement from our program and overall students in MET just dig into the Cal ecosystem. We don't have a formula for student engagement. We just provide the resources for you to decide how you want to be involved from our students from research, the Greek system, working at the campus newspaper, sports clubs, internships, our students are involved in all parts of campus life, which help layer the student experience and develop confidence. Our community building is done with our amazing MET student board. Each year, a group of students choose to run for positions that represent all facets of MET life. The board engages academically, socially, and professionally with fellow MET students. Some of the notable endeavors include hosting a fall retreat up in the mountains, creating an MET strategy group, which consults with local businesses, forming the Big Little program, which allows for students from different graduation years to have an MET family, rooftop socials, brunches. We just had a social like charcuterie board social about two weeks ago, et cetera. All kinds of fun happens. Now on to our next slide which talks about some different engagement activities. Here are some of the types of activities you would expect if you come to MET. We have coffee chats, which are generally hosted by an organization that is interested in hiring our students. A partner from a firm will either come to campus to host or host a chat virtually. For example, last year we had Bain, a large consulting company, host a day of coffee chats for our student. They were 15 minutes in length, you have a cup of coffee, chat with the recruiter. We have company treks. That's where we have a group of students visit an employer at their headquarters. We've had treks to Facebook, now Meta, NVIDIA, Bloom Energy, to name a few. We host monthly employer meet and greet sessions, which are fall semester, which are boutique career fairs for MET students only. We have information sessions, which are sessions where employers come and talk about an overview of their organization. And we have lunch and learns, which are our form of fa faculty integration. In the past, we've hosted lunch and learns with Professor Terry Johnson, Professor Grace Gu, Professor Josh Hug, Professor Brady of Haas. It's a small group of 10 plus students with one professor to actually get to know the individuals outside of the classroom in a more relaxed setting. And we have offered office hours and mentorship throughout the duration of the program. In addition to having our MET advisory board members host office hours, we've expanded office hours to our upperclassmen from all engineering tracks, as well as our campus partners. On to our next slide. So this is just a sampling of the type of companies that come to our employer meet and greet sessions. They're held in Blum Hall where all of our offices are located. So students go to the first floor of Blum Hall. We have them for September, October, November, our fall semester. This is just a sampling of who's been to our, our events. If you notice some of the logos up there, 
We generally have between 150 to 170 students that show up. Always our September meet and greet is by far the busiest one. And then they sort of trickle off after that because students get busy with academics. And then on to our next slide. This is just a bit of our program highlights. Um, so each year we do this. The first box here on the left is a snapshot of our continuing student admissions process. If you're a current student enrolled in the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley, you can apply to MET as a sophomore for entry into the program as a junior. This year, we were excited to welcome four students in our MET pipeline from the MET community as juniors. We've graduated our second class, the class of 2022. We had 25 students engage in the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program, which means they engaged in an internship with a startup via this program called the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program. The program launched the summer of 2020 and made it possible by generous support from the MET Advisory Board. Each student involved receives a grant of $2,000 a month or $6,000 for the summer for 10 to 12 weeks of full-time work affiliated with the startup between June and August. We work with the following accelerators to source internships, Skydeck, Y Combinator, Evo Nexus, SAPIO, Techstars, and thank you, Ryan Me, now in the bio. 83% of our students engaged in a summer internship last summer. The top 10 employers who engaged with our students last summer were Google, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Figma, HBO Max, Neuro, PayPal, Roblox, and SpaceX. We're going to go ahead and drop this brochure in the chat so you all can look at it at a later time if you choose to look at it again. In terms of our class overview, on to the next slide. We had 47 graduates last year in the class of 2022. We had our placement rate was 83% of students um, chose to engage in full-time employment, 3% enrolled or enrolled in graduate school, and the other 14% were working on their own startup or taking time off. The geographic distribution leans heavily towards the Bay Area, but we also have students all across America and a few actually international. You can see where our students are landing. We have 1% of our students end up becoming founders, 33% land in finance, and the following 66% are in technology. Here are the list of some of the companies where our students are working and the average median compensation for undergraduates from the MET program last year was $138,000. <clears> I'm now going to hand over the mic to Don Kramer. Thank you, Chris. Um, I, so as an academic advisor, I am here to talk about some academics. And um, as you should know by now, uh, the MET program has seven tracks that you can apply to. Um, they're all listed here on the page. So we have bio, civil, electrical, industrial, materials, mechanical. And for those of you who are undecided, we also offer engineering undeclared. Um, admitted students who select undeclared will take courses in the major they're most interested in their first year and then declare a major by the end of their freshman year. So if you're undecided, we strongly recommend that you choose undecided, undeclared engineering, um, engineering undeclared, so that you have more of the opportunity to get into the major that you are most interested in once you start here. In our next slide, um, as you can tell by the students on the call with us, I would say the majority of our students choose the electrical engineering and computer sciences track, but that doesn't mean that we don't have everyone. Um, this is a plan of study that basically breaks down what kind of courses you'll be taking generally over your four years at UC Berkeley. So within each major, you would take the majority of your classes are pretty much spread out over your four years. Freshman year, you'd take about 12 units of courses that fulfill EECS requirements. Sophomore year would be more like eight. And a lot of these are going to be lower division like physics, math, um, <clears throat> courses like that. And then your junior year, you're gonna be getting your, your upper division electrical engineering courses and you have electives that you'll be taking. Um, to fulfill degree requirements. And then senior year, you'll probably have a few more um, of those upper division EECS courses. And then as you can see in the next column, business major, you're gonna do mostly your prerequisites your first two years. And then junior, senior year is when you'll take the majority of your business courses. Of course, if you finish your prerequisites earlier, you can start taking upper division courses earlier. That happens in our program, but it's not required. And then as you can see here, we have two MET courses. 
um, the introductory topics course for freshmen and the junior capstone course um, the junior year. So, and other courses that you'll need to take will be breadth courses, reading and composition courses, all the things that make you have a rounded out education. Um, so that is what the overall looks like. On our next slide, you'll see that we have, um, this is kind of what the freshman year of EECS plus business looks like. Um, a lot of students will come in with some exam credit or perhaps community college coursework that they've taken before they've gotten here. Um, so schedules look different for everybody. But if you come from somewhere that has no AP exams or you weren't able to take community co college courses, then this is what your first year at Berkeley would look like. In the fall semester, you would likely sign up for Computer Science 61A, which is the structure and interpretation of computer programs. You would enroll in Math 1A, which is calculus. You could potentially take a natural science elective. So that could be a biology course or a chemistry course. Um, but we could also, as we can work on that, fitting that in later on down the line. Um, you would take UGBA 10, which is an introductory business course. And then the freshman MET class we talked about. Spring, you'd follow with Computer Science 61B. You would jump into Engineering 16A. You would take Math 1B, more calculus. You could potentially take an economics course and a reading and composition course. So it's a pretty busy first year, but um, you'll get the hang of it. So next slide kind of shows our senior year, um, which it's again, similar. So you're gonna be taking those upper division electrical engineering and computer science elective courses. You'll be taking introduction to finance for business. You'll take some business electives most likely, but that would be your, your final year for fall and spring would be a lot of upper division coursework and some elective classes. And next we have Trishala to talk about internships. Yeah, so METs tend to engage in a lot of different internships from a lot of different industries. Um, this can range from anything from a tech company to anything from a business oriented company and everything in the middle. A lot of METs come in with industries that they're super excited about, and this can be electric vehicles to sustainable food to nonprofit work. And as you can see through this super extensive list, there has absolutely been an MET that has interned at that company before that is more than happy to help out current students with anything from getting a referral to understanding how the process works to get the internship offer um, and all of that fun stuff. So internships are a really great way for us to apply what we learn during the school year and um, use those skills towards an actual impactful project. So yeah, we absolutely love it. I don't know if the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program was touched upon, but since it's on the list, we also have a really great opportunity to work with startups if we'd like to. And MET does a really great job of setting that up for us. So I'll pass that on. Um, I'll go ahead and jump in here. So the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program was started in um, the summer of 2020. And again, students are sourced startup internships. We have a startup fair that happens in April and students in our program have choose to engage in very large numbers. The first year we had 36 students engage and the following summers that we're in our third year of it, we've had 25 students each. We work with the tech accelerators to do a virtual career fair where students engage with all the various startups. Our students interview with those startups and then they go ahead and um, have an agreement where they will be getting a grant to do startup work over the summer. So um, we're excited to offer this opportunity again this summer. And um, yeah, that program is called the Entrepreneurial Fellows Program. I believe I'm handing it off to Ryan. To me. Oh, Pedro, there we go. So yeah, so let's talk about uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, Berkeley has a lot of resources in this area. And I know a lot of MET students that come in are really excited about the space. And so as an MET student, you will be able to tap into the whole innovation ecosystem that exists here. Uh, and these names that are listed are accelerators, they're incubators, they're, uh, they're places where you can just go and learn. Um, 
their Sutarja Center has has money. They have innovation labs. When I say innovation labs, I really mean maker spaces. And so there's places for you to actually build things. There's places for you to go pitch and get money. And there's places for you to actually like scale and then get customers. And Skydeck is probably uh, the crown jewel of a lot of this. They're a, a pretty well-known accelerator. And then the House Fund is also a big big player here. They're a VC firm that's funded some incredible companies. And two places that are really good to start, just so you can see an actual really comprehensive list, if you go to begin.berkeley.edu, and I'll drop these in the chat after, but begin.berkeley.edu and startup.berkeley.edu, that has a solid comprehensive list of a lot of the resources here. All right, let's talk a bit about research. So there's no shortage of amazing research opportunities, even as a freshman here on campus. I'm involved with um, the Berkeley Institute of Data Science and also as just like Pedro, um, the Berkeley AI Lab. And as a freshman, there is a program called URAP, which you can see the small logo on the right. That is the undergraduate research apprenticeship program, which you can apply to. And they, even if you're not really sure about what you want to do, they will match you with a professor to go through um, a research project that you design or they mentor you on your freshman year. Um, the caliber of the research is quite insane. Like um, last semester, I worked with Professor Eric Betzig, who won the 2014 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and he was actually relatively accessible. And even just working in this like relatively unassuming, like mid-century sort of like modern building that just like those this little squat building on campus, the amount of Nobel laureates that came out of that lab, I think that one building was called Barker Hall. It was like Carrie Mullis trained there, Davis Julius did his Nobel work there, Svante Pablo who won, or he's going to be a Nobel laureate very soon. This year did his work there, Eric Betzig did. And then outside of the window, you can look across the street, you can see IGI where Jennifer Down is working on CRISPR. So just in that one tiny corner of campus, there is so much research prowess. And um, tying me back into what um, Pedro said, um, research here on campus is extremely, extremely tied in with the entrepreneurial ecosystem. A lot of the professors have companies. Um, just this morning, I was talking to Professor Ming Wu. He founded the company Berkeley Lights and took its IPO. And I'm working on a research project where he's an advisor. Um, and it's just any, any opportunity that you can think of, there's probably a professor out there for you that can mentor your project and give you advice. If Pedro has anything to add to this, I know he probably does. <laughs> uh, sure. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of labs here, a lot of great work. Um, I've been exposed to the computer science part and the Berkeley AI Research Lab, RISE Lab, other similar labs are very, they're, they're working on the cutting edge, cutting edge. They have really great professors. They have Turing Award winners. It's it's really incredible. Awesome. So I'll take it away from here about student clubs. There is a super, super extensive list of clubs that us MET students are involved in, as well as clubs that are made available to all of Berkeley. Um, and we can get that link dropped in the chat in a little bit. But although we do pursue a dual degree, I would say MET students are very, very involved with the Berkeley community. And this is through a variety of different student clubs and organizations. Um, I'm personally in a consulting club called Venture Strategy Solutions, where I get to work with a team and consult for startups. So we get to apply a lot of the skills that we learn towards solving real world problems for startups of all industries and sizes. I was also director at HBSA, which is the Haas Business School Association, and absolutely amazing experience. But apart from all these different consulting, tech, and business clubs, there's also a big variety of recreational clubs. So a lot of MET students get involved with int intramural sports, a lot of nonprofit and social impact work, and also Greek life. Great, thank you to the students. Um, now I will be talking about how to apply and next steps. To apply to Berkeley MET, students go through the normal UC Berkeley process through the UC application. Make sure you check the Berkeley MET box to express interest in the program. Then look out for an email asking you to complete the supplemental essay, which may come two to five business days after submitting the main UC application. It may be different for everyone, just depending on when you submit your UCF. 
Then the Berkeley MET reader team reviews your UC application with a special focus on why Berkeley MET. Please note that the supplemental essay prompt is available on the screen and on our website as well. Now I will go into what we look for in students. First, we look for students who challenge themselves academically and are interested in the intersection of business and technology. We look for a solid background in math and science to meet College of Engineering requirements, but also good at critical reading and writing. We also look for strong academics and students who have demonstrated leadership in the community. It could be starting an organization, being a leader of a club or a team, or starting a company. Um, we also look for students who have strong IP and communication skills, intellectual curiosity, and creativity. Ultimately, we are striving to uh, admit a group of well-rounded, diverse candidates who want to learn from each other and strive to make the world a better place. So more on how to apply. First, you select Berkeley as an option. Berkeley MET is a unique program because it already has an alternate major built into the process. This means that the applicant's alternate major is automatically the College of Engineering major that corresponds to the MET major the applicant is applying to. So applicants who do not get admitted will still be considered for admission to the College of Engineering for the MET engineering track they selected. Admission to the College of Engineering is not guaranteed. Um, applicants have the option to toggle between um, college and category view. If you see above the default view is the GIF that is the college view. You can find MET under both Haas School of Business and College of Engineering. From there, you must select the engineering track of your choice. And freshman applicants have seven options to choose from, which we went over um, in previous slides. If you have additional questions regarding the application process, we advise you to check out the application FAQs on the Office of Undergraduate Admission website, and the link will be provided to that website as well. So now we will be going through questions. I will be having a couple show on the screen and then Chris will help answer those questions. So the first one is, how do I submit my supplemental essay? MET applicants must first complete the UC application and choose one of the MET engineering tracks. After submitting your UC application, students will receive an email with a link to the MET supplemental form. This typically takes two to five business days. You must submit your supplemental essay by the deadline of December 16th. If you do not submit your essay by the deadline, you will not be considered for admission to the MET program. I believe Dawn already put the supplemental essay link in the chat. Next question. Can I transfer into the MET program once I start Cal? MET does accept applications from continuing UC Berkeley sophomores and the College of Engineering for admissions as juniors. For more information, visit our website. Unfortunately, students cannot transfer into MET from community colleges, universities, or other UC Berkeley majors or colleges. Next question is, are there any prerequisites for applying? Yes. MET applicants must meet UC Berkeley's basic admission requirements. The MET program is small and selective, enrolling students with exceptional academic records and a demonstrated interest in combining engineering and business. Next question. With UC Berkeley no longer using ACT or SAT exams in the review process, does this mean that, Berkeley U, that UC Berkeley is, quote, test blind? In an effort to create a an evaluation that is more equitable, the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, also known as OUA, will not be reviewing ACT or SAT in any part of the evaluation process. Great, next question. If I am not selected for the MET program, am I still eligible for other majors at UC Berkeley? MET is highly competitive. The number of admitted applicants is kept small to ensure close mentoring in a tight knit cohort. Applicants who are not admitted to the MET program will be automatically considered for admission to Berkeley Engineering's BioE, CE, EECS, IUR, or ME majors. However, admission to these majors is not guaranteed. And the last question we will be covering, does being rejected from MET count negatively against me again when considering for bioengineering, civil engineering, 
electrical engineering and computer sciences, industrial engineering and operations research, or mechanical engineering? The answer is no, it does not count negatively against you. We are now ready to answer any additional questions anybody has. Feel free to start asking questions in the chat and we will try to triage those questions. So I have a couple of them that have been sent to me directly. So from here on out, if you want to send a message to everyone, that way everyone can see them. The first one is, can you change the academic trans track once admitted? Okay, I can answer this question. So I think um, that was basically what I was trying to touch upon when I said, choose the major that you want most. Um, it is possible to change your major within the College of Engineering, but there's different requirements for each major. Some of those requirements require two semesters of attendance. Like if you were admitted in mechanical engineering and you wanna change your major to EECS, then you would have to attend UC Berkeley for two semesters. You would have to maintain degree progress in your current major, which would be in mechanical engineering. You'd also have to take an EECS course for every semester you've been in attendance, and you would have to do, uh, you would have to make sure that you meet a GPA minimum. Um, so it's not an easy thing to do. It's not just checking a box on a form. Um, it, it's possible, but it's never guaranteed. Great, thank you, Don, for that. Um, next question I see, I um, so the student says, can I study energy engineering with a double major in business? So I, are you asking if you can do the two degrees singly, singularly I, and not without MET? I think, I think that's student. Is that the question? I think so. Yeah, um, it's possible to apply to the business major. Um, but you would have to wait until you're admitted. So there's a new freshman admissions policy for this class in the Haas School of Business. So we should, um, I'll pause here and I'll find the FAQ for their admissions policy and drop that in the chat. Great, thank you. Moving on to the next question, let me see. So one student says, I submitted UC app in early October, but haven't seen an email regarding MET essay. That's, so it goes through a whole system. It goes to UC Office of the President, which is like the governing body that handles like all admissions flow and it gets distributed to the campuses. So I'm not surprised by that. We wouldn't generally see those until after the deadline, which is November 30th. So um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's, that's about right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and someone said to the group, when will the first high school summer camp for MET be? That's in flux for us right now. Um, we had planned to have it in the summer of 2023. Um, as you can imagine, being a large public university, we've got some, um, some things to negotiate and work out. So if it doesn't happen in the summer of 2023, it, we will have one in the summer of 2024. So stay tuned on that. Okay. And a question from Gregory. Can we talk about bit about the difference between MET and just doing an engineering degree and then an MBA. Is one path a substitute for the other? So I'm happy to answer that, but I want to open this up to any of our students who chose to do a dual degree. Maybe if you guys have any insight on why that was a choice for you that you made. Sorry, do you mind repeating that one more time? Like why we, yeah. so why why do like a dual degree as an undergrad, you could just get an engineering degree and then go on and get your MBA. So what, what was the benefit for you doing it like a dual degree basically? Um, personally, I feel like it's opened up a lot of career and professional opportunities for me. Um, as mentioned before, I study EECS and business. And I know now that going out into the job market, I can, go into full like software engineering, software development. I also have the opportunity to go straight into business, which is like finance and investment banking. And I can also go into a combination of the two fields, which is product management. 
And I feel like having that opportunity to do the dual degree in four years really opens up professional opportunities. And you're not just limited to your undergrad degree when you're looking for internships, you can explore any of those fields. Um, furthermore, getting the two degrees in the four years means that I don't even have to worry about grad school. Um, of course, it is always an option for MET students that are interested, but I get to join the workforce a lot sooner um, and really just hit the ground running. So um, that's why I personally prefer it. Great. Thank you, Trishala. I can add something here. I think that um, having both of them at the same time helps you really understand both sides of it, especially as someone who likes to uh, do entrepreneurship. I've started a company before and I'm working on it now. But um, having those conversations with the business school professors helps a lot. And so I think business school is a lot of just like getting to know professors, getting to know people in your class. And you can do that same thing as an undergrad, uh, have access to those guys and go to their office hours, have one-on-ones and so on. So I think the value of having it at the same time, especially as your engineering degree, you can just, you can ask better questions. You can have those conversations earlier and get that knowledge faster. I, I don't plan on going to grad school and doing it now has helped me a lot. All right, thank you. Um, so another question, what kind of opportunities are available for people interested in the automotive slash electrical vehicle space? So I'll go ahead and take that. We've got students at every electric vehicle company known to man, but Ryan, Trishala, Pedro, like, what do you know? Like Tesla, Lucid, whoever. Um, if we aren't working with them, we certainly will start. So I don't know if you guys want to add anything about the EV space. Yeah, uh, just, I think uh, literally all of the course tracks have people working at Tesla, at Cruise, at Argo AI, all of the big self-driving and even some of the, I think somebody worked at GM, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're interested in working on cars, EVs, normal cars, autonomous vehicles, there's so many people in MEC working on that. There's also a lot of research going on that kind of related to it, at least. There's there's some two real problems being worked on, uh, research and reinforcement learning, which could power some autonomous vehicle stuff, um, and also battery research uh, to help out electric vehicles. We also have an electric car team formula. <laughs> it's a great club. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to our next question. Are there opportunities for international study? I can answer that. Or Ryan, did you want to go ahead? No. <laughs> I thought I saw your mic off. So um, yeah, study abroad is definitely a possibility for MET students. Um, up till now, since our program is still relatively new and about two years of that was COVID, um, no one has gone during the academic year, but some have gone during, some students have gone during the summer. Um, I actually know, I've been talking to a handful of students that are hoping to go uh, next spring. So definitely opportunities. Great. So we have a question for the students on the panel. How flexible and tolerable is the coursework? Are there a lot of opportunities to take electives? I can answer that from an EECS perspective. So from an EECS perspective, very flexible. The EECS degree is actually fairly short. Um, it's meant to be completed in three and a half years, which means that most people can do it in about three. And with that extra time, people in MET don't typically graduate early. They take the extra time and just take whatever classes they want. Although there have been some cases where they graduate early, uh, but at least there you can take a lot of different electives. You can take grad classes whenever you want. And so it is quite flexible in that regard. I think the business major is a little less flexible in terms of there's more classes you have to take, uh, but there's still room for at least two or three uh, electives, I think. Yeah, I think, especially uh, after like your sophomore year, you're very free to take whatever you want. Like this semester, I'm taking a swing dancing class and a mixed martial arts class and an Asian art history class, which is completely unrelated to anything business or EECS or research related is just for the sake of having a bit of fun. And that's something you can do at Berkeley. There's beyond amazing engineering classes and research and a great business school. We also have just very, very random, very, very fun classes in pretty much any discipline you can think of. Like I heard there's like a wine tasting class, great art, <laughs> music or anything you can think of. 
Great, thank you. Um, another question, any tips to stand out for the application process as this program is competitive? Also, could you repeat the number of applicants each year? I'm assuming accepted to the program. It hovers around 50 students per year accepted into the program. Last year we had over 5,000 applicants. And the question in terms of what oh, to do to sorry. stand out, go ahead, Don. Oh, I just love to hear Ryan, Trishala, and or Pedro share anything that you, you know, not necessarily included on your application, but the kind of activities and things that you may have done before you started here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at least for me in high school, I was very involved with um, social impact and nonprofit work. I absolutely loved it. And I worked with a lot of different organizations that were centered around women in STEM. Um, I came from a background where I had access to resources and I was able to learn about technology and coding and entrepreneurship, but recognizing that other people around the world, specifically students, didn't have those opportunities. I spearheaded some stuff to um, bring tech education and entrepreneurial education to underserved communities around the world. Um, apart from that, I did a lot of hackathons and startup competitions in high school, actually. It was one of my favorite things to do. I love that kind of spirit that comes in meeting up with teams and huddling late at night and kind of like talking about your hackathon idea and coding it out and like really grinding it out at night. So that was another big thing I did in high school um, that I think contributed to MET. I think a common thread among all the MET applications is showing that you have a small, like a very, very strong technical background. But beyond that, being able to show the demonstrate that you're a leader and you're a bit creative. I think I focus a lot on my research, but my MET specific essay was about my very, or I've only been to two hackathons, but it was about the very first hackathon I attended was at Y Combinator. And my essay was about how I accidentally set the Y Combinator parking lot on fire. And Sort of the <laughs> sort of fun experiences in engineering, and so have some fun writing your essays. Show your creativity. That would be probably my strongest advice. I agree. I agree. I think it was a long time ago, but I I, I think I spent a lot of time doing competitions, as in like academic, like computer science competitions and physics competitions, stuff like that, and then also entrepreneurship. So starting stuff. Um, getting shipping things to market, making people use what you build. Uh, all of that gives you really great stories. And I think that having those types of stories to be able to tell is very, very powerful. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, if you have Can any, I... oh, go ahead, Tom, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing to that. Um, I think that it's also important to note that that's not the only way to get into MET, right? You don't have to have all the AP exams, you don't have to have community college work. Maybe you didn't have access to a hackathon or um, you know, research opportunities. I think one of the most important things in the application process is showing how your unique experience um, motivated you, just like our question says, um, what motivated you to apply to Berkeley MET? Chris, do you have anything to add to that? I do. It's just really bringing your authentic self and talk about the distance traveled. Like, where did you start and where are you today? What gave you the confidence to apply? What do you hope to do with it? And really, rather than just getting an engineering degree or a business degree, why do you need two degrees? Talk, focus on that. Like, why Why the intersection of the two? Why Why is that of interest to you? And what, what do you want to do with that? You don't have to have the answer, but like, I hope to make the world a better place. Like, just like have some intent with regard to that and maybe touching on entrepreneurship. And again, you don't have to have you don't have to have created an app or started a company, but I've always been a tinkerer and I help my dad with his gardening business. I don't care what it is, it doesn't really matter, but just kind of lay into that land of like, you know, why two degrees and then what do you want to do? <clears throat> so I realize we're running out of time. I want to be yeah. respectful of everybody here on the call. Um thank you everyone for your questions. We loved having everyone here. If you have any specific questions related to you or we can't get to yours, please email us after the webinar and we'll be happy to answer those. And then just the last slide. Thank Thanks you all everyone. for joining us. Yeah, take care. Good luck. Enjoy your senior year. 
Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye. Thank you. Sorry. Thank if, you. Have uh, a wonderful evening. If our questions weren't um, answered, what email could we uh, ask them at? Uh, you can ask them at the Berkeley ME or the email that um, you were sent the link to. So uh, MET at berkeley.edu. Okay. And just, um, yeah, any follow up, uh, you can send it to there and we'll be answering um, this week. All right. Well, thank thank you. you, everyone.